first thing I did when thinking about the theme um, and reading the call for submissions was to actually look up the etymology of the term authenticity. What I realized was that um, authenticity comes from terms like authorship and authority and uh, also relates to um, the term genuine. Um, and so it seemed like these themes were already present in the work, but I was using different terms. Most of my work I've been describing um, with words like uh, fidelity um, and also working through reference, which I think when we're talking about authenticity uh, or something that might be authentic, it, it's always in relation to a reference. And so most of the work that we do uh, starts with a reference and then tries to sort of reposition that reference and trying to uh, resituate it into something more conceptual. Architecture has always um, tried to draw a line between the discipline and the practice. And for, for a long time, that, that line has provided, uh, basically has allowed the architect to gain distance from the builder, to say we, we do one thing and builders do another. Uh, because there's been a line between the discipline and practice, we haven't yet begun to talk about them or to try to figure out what they actually are. And two things that are really interesting to me are, one is the architectural mock-up, which is something that we sort of play out in practice as a way to validate an idea, um, actually build it uh, at one-to-one -one scale out of actual materials. And it's also a way that, you know, architects prove things to clients and um, if, you know, if you can sort of build a portion of it and you can demonstrate or prove the sort of validity or veracity of something, then maybe have been pushed into practice that we haven't yet necessarily started to talk about. There are things that are sort of like right on the edge of being actual or, or being almost built a building, um, but they're not quite there. And so one of the things that we, we tried to do in, in this installation, in this work, was to sort of bring them, bring them into the discipline or, or conceptualize them. This year we were finalists for the PS1 competition, the Young Architects Program, and earlier this year we presented the proposal to to MoMA and, and, the, uh, and the jury and, and we lost. Um, and so we sort of saw this as an opportunity to install something in this gallery space that, that was coming from that project. Basically took um, or proposed to take the existing roof of PS1, um, replicate it and reproduce it in the courtyard. And so the project became completely about, um, I guess, the sort of, in inauthentic roof versus the sort of authentic roof. But then in, in sort of actually constructing it and actually making out of um, building materials and revealing the sort of frame to sort of claim that this thing was actually here, that it, it had a kind of presence, um, I think it, it sort of took on a whole other form. Uh, and so well, we replicated some of the gutter details at full scale from, from the PS1 project and, and constructed them um, in, in the gallery space. Is this an installation or is this actually, if it is constructed in, in the gallery, is it something else? Um, and I, I'm not sure I have an answer to that, but th these are some of the ideas that we're working through. Uh, and then uh, if, if these are one-to-one -one and, and we're also presenting the, the model at another scale, then uh, it sort of also sort of confuses the relationship between model, installation, mock-up, and, and a piece of construction, which, uh, which is a conversation that we're sort of having right now in the office. Like, what are the differences between these things? What are the sort of uh, sites that, that architects op operate at? Like, what, what are the limits of architectural work? Um, and how does, how does the architecture installation begin to sort of play into all these other things? I think it's one of the oldest, I would say it's one of the oldest problems that we've been working on in architecture. Um, and a lot of it comes from just translating a drawing into a building and trying to stay as close as possible to a set of drawings or even just saying that the set of drawings has um, more authority than the building like this is this is the thing that's being worked from and so the idea that we would stay faithful to something um, in architecture I think has, has been a conversation since at least since well for the last 400 years let's say I think there's also a kind of politic involved in, in fidelity and that maybe gets into the conversation about originals and copies um, and that the you know original sometimes has more 
somehow more authority than, than the copies. But sometimes copies are so faithful to the original that we can't make that distinction anymore. They all sort of become one thing. And so I think uh, being almost being too close or too faithful uh, somehow becomes a little bit problematic because in architecture we've always had these things that are different, that the drawing is different than the building and the model is different than the, than the set of drawings and all of these sort of uh, forms of representation operate at different levels and participate in different conversations. And the, and the moment we start talking about high fidelity, the, that space between those things begins to collapse. One of the things that we've been really interested in is this idea of transmission loss. And I think in architecture, um, of course, when you move from, let's say, a drawing to a building or a model to a rendering, you, there's, there are things that are lost, in, just in the sense that the two th those two things are never the same. Um, but there's also gains in the sense that um, each, sort of each translation or each mode of representation is picking up other different things. I've sort of been allergic to the, uh, to the idea that I would actually have a kind of um, uh, a, an architectural practice in, in the sense that uh, that I would be designing buildings that would be built and I for a long time I thought that rep, sort of architecture could operate in a representational mode that building was something else and that the and that architecture and the discipline like existed on the other side of that line and um, recently I've been trying to build, bring those two things together um, and I think one of the reasons or like one of the important things that has happened in the last couple years is is that I've started teaching full-time and I think the relationship between practice and teaching is um, something that's incredibly important to me and really productive um, so the the idea that uh, practice sits on one side and sort of practice and building sit on one side and the discipline and academia sit on sit on the other is something that a lot of people keep sort of separate or um, but it's something that I'm sort of trying to bring together in different ways and hope, hopefully can do that in the next, in the next couple years.